St. Martin. I hereby address you as Prime Minister and Chair of the EOC in an update for today, Monday, April 20th, 2020, as part of the process to keep the community of St. Martin informed about the latest developments and government's COVID-19 prevention, mitigation, and response measures. Based on the latest data available as of April 20th at 4 p.m. from our CPS head, Mrs. Ava Lista de Weaver, I update you as follows. There are no new updates as per quarantine numbers and isolation numbers. They remain at 98 and 87 respectively. The number hospitalized are seven. This is based on information received um, from medical center. The number totally tested are 244 persons to date, 68 are positive. So we received one new positive as of today. 47 males, 21 females, of which 141 of the 249 are negative. The number still pending results are 39 and one is still inconclusive. The number deceased remains at 10, as I mentioned yesterday. One Dutch St. Martin resident passed away in Guadeloupe has been added to our numbers. As such, no other persons have passed away on St. Martin over the past couple of days. We wish to express our condolence to the family and friends of all those who have lost their lives due to the COVID-19 pandemic and pray that we will continue to mitigate that any other person would have to suffer unnecessarily through this disease. As such, I would like to encourage each and every one who is experiencing any type of symptoms, flu-like symptoms, whether it be cough, cold, or fever, to immediately notify their general practitioner or CPS at 914. It is better that we catch the virus within the first five days of the onset of the symptoms. In this way, we are better able to medicate and properly care for you and not allow it to reach to such a stage that you arrive at the hospital in critical condition. Again, I have mentioned in previous broadcasts that persons with underlying health concerns such as diabetes, um, lung disease, heart disease, obesity, and high blood pressure are all recommended to stay at home, especially those persons as your systems are already compromised and therefore you would be susceptible to serious uh, or severe cases of COVID-19. We would like to continue to express our gratitude to all the persons who have been compliant in following our regulations as has been put forth. And I must say, I am very, very proud of you, St. Martin. I can also announce on a good note that the first patient has been transferred to the mobile medical pavilion at the St. Martin Medical Center as of Saturday, April 18th, 2020. This must have taken place shortly after my tour by St. Martin Medical Center uh, professionals as well as together with Mrs. Fenn Arnell. The patient requires level four care and will be given that care at the mobile medical pavilion before being discharged. This patient was transferred from the medical center critical care to this medical mobile pavilion. So therefore we can tell that they are therefore improving. This also allows for beds to be freed up at the hospital for the more critical patients as they are able to resume other services that they are accustomed to. As you know, many of the elective surgeries, etc., have been put off and other um, non-urgent situations had also been put off. With the eyebraying, with the extension of the medical center's IC capacity outside of the hospital, um, we are now able to better care for our regular um, patients. I'm also able to say that the recipient, St. Martin is the recipient of the first ICU hospitainer, that is the hospital container, which arrived over the weekend and will replace the ICU tent. The second hospitainer will arrive later this week. These hospitainers were made possible by the Ministry of Public Health, Welfare and Sports in the Netherlands, and we do thank them for following up on promises made. Point two, CPS community outreach. Today I'd like to update you that while awaiting a formal report from CPS on this outreach, in the interim, I have some preliminary findings from the outreach in the three neighborhoods visited. From April 14th to April 19th, 2020, 
CPS led a community initiative where volunteers would go door to door to identify those persons with symptoms. They have been coming to you, asking you questions, as well as sharing pertinent information on a card in several languages. If persons were found to be symptomatic, they were then tested by CPS staff. The volunteers went to three neighborhoods over the past few days, Sucker Garden, Cay Bay, and Cay Hill, and spoke to approximately 242 households, consisting of a total of 632 persons. Of the 632 persons, nine persons were identified as having signs and symptoms of the flu, of which six persons consented to be tested. I would like to encourage the other three persons to also take this opportunity to know your status. Remember, the testing, all that is being done is on the expense of government and you do not have to fear that anything negative would happen to you except that we would be able to give you the necessary service as a COVID positive patient, if that is the case. The results of these six persons are still pending. This is actually the goal of our outreach program and the reason for the continuation of our lockdown, of our state of emergency. I'd like us to use the correct name. We are in a state of emergency and as such, we have asked that the general public remain at home as much as possible and only leave their homes properly protected if entirely necessary. It must be strictly necessary. You must have an urgent need for whether it is groceries, going to the bank, or visiting your family doctor, etc. This morning, I held together with some of my staff a uh, meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands, Mr. Steph Block, together with the other Prime Ministers within the Kingdom of Curaçao and Aruba. During the meter, meeting, sorry, each minister from Aruba, Curaçao, St. Martin, and the Netherlands gave an update on the measures implemented and the status of the crisis, as well as the confirmed numbers. Discussions were had about the possibility for international and European assistance, to which Minister Block indicated that he would provide information on this at a later date, hopefully within the next few days. As you know, as part of the Kingdom, we cannot access outside funding without intervention of our Dutch Kingdom partners. As such, we have asked the Minister, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, to look into possibilities for funding elsewhere. Minister Block and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are willing to assist with the discussion of aid and assistance from Cuba and China, but express the need for, the, for all of us to continue to be vigilant in these discussions. As such, I must update the general public, if you did not already know, that we have requested or looked into the request of uh, getting some medical technical assistance from Cuba and the country of China has actually offered assistance in the form of medical equipment and the like. We are processing these requests as well as these offers and will be updating as soon as we have been able to make any type of headway. Also the, today, in our weekly meeting with the French side of St. Martin, uh, the Prefet, uh, Madame Fisher, uh, President Gibbs, as well as First Vice President Damaso, as well as medical professional Dr. Brice Daveton, and the Chief of the Gendarmes, Commandant Basso, were in um, this meeting. Both the Prevet and myself offered our updates um, on the recent cases, how we are working in terms of tracking um, the persons who have been identified as positive as well as any contacts they may have. Sometimes this requires collaboration on both sides as has been noted with the recent uh, passing of our Dutch residents um, who had been in contact with persons on the Dutch side and they are being monitored by CPS. The Prefet also expressed plans to increase testing via Dr. Daviton uh, to get more accurate information. This was based on the question as to how their numbers were still so low. They still continue to test based on symptoms, etc., and now are trying to move into a more wider range of testing. Currently, we are also testing more persons and going into the community, and they were updated on our strategy in this. So we are looking to collaborate as such in terms of doing more of the same thing um, together. 
Additionally, it was agreed that the health authorities on both sides would coordinate efforts in qualifying persons as healthy. So you would see that we have our recovered numbers as well as they would have our, their recovered numbers. We would like to synchronize that we are both looking at the same criteria for determining whether patients are recovered from COVID-19. Finally, in that meeting, uh, the much discussed waiver situation was discussed. As you may know, both of us have been experiencing much discussions, much challenges with the many waivers that have been requested during the second week of the lockdown, especially. Um, we have come to the agreement even prior to me uh, extending the national decree for the state of emergency that the prefet and the prefecture would be the one granting permission for those wanting to come to the front side and myself as Prime Minister, as well as Chief John, would deal with any and all persons who are requesting to come to the Dutch side. Reasons um, being used, and I must say, waivers being granted are solely for work purposes. So if you live on one side and work on the next side for delivery of food, as well as for medical purposes. Of course, we will be um, ascertaining whether requests to assist um, persons within your family for medical reasons, etc., will be approved, and that will be done on a one-by-one -one basis. You must have a proof of what you are expecting to do on either side. For um, to be able to be assisted in a timely fashion, one should send your request in at least 24 hours prior. So this is the way we hope to minimize the use of the waivers. Um, for unnecessary purposes and continue to enforce that persons should be um, not moving. It is really the priority of this government as well as the French government that we remain as much as possible at home and only for necessary movement will the waivers be granted. ESF 7 has had fruitful meetings, that is the ESF that is coordinating the community outreach in terms of assisting the vulnerable with food um, uh, together with social services. They had a very fruitful meeting with the other organizations and NGOs that are out delivering as well as with community leaders to streamline the delivery list to ensure that no one is receiving double and to ensure that our most vulnerable will receive. As of this morning, the, they have been distributing the packages we received on Thursday last week and they were busy with the packing on Saturday and Sunday in collaboration with the community leaders. I would like to thank all volunteers who are assisting ESF 7, all of the community leaders, all of the churches, the Council of Churches especially, and all the NGOs including especially Frigan Foods because they have been doing this ever since our hurricanes in 2017 and have never stopped. They have been distributing, distributing um, leftovers from the supermarkets that are still good, in good condition to be consumed to the much needed persons within our community instead of allowing the supermarkets to dispose of them. So I'm very pleased of the work that DJ and Yos have been doing of freegan foods within our community and they are also collaborating with ESF7 in our outreach to assure that all those needy would receive much needed food and assistance. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, the, I would like to reiterate that the waivers as per our new national decree, extending the exception of April 20, 2020 on number 2020, 0316 for the entire territory of St. Martin. This new national decree for the state of emergency will be instituted for a period of three weeks. We will be evaluating weekly and if necessary, changing it. But for now, this goes until started April 19 and will go for three weeks. And if necessary, will be extended as well. Traveling from French side to Dutch side, persons who live in St. Martin but work in St. Martin or have urgent medical appointments or other urgent matters to deal with regarding banking, etc., should fill in the travel waiver form certificate of exception from the Dutch side um, 
to be signed by your employer and the Prime Minister. You may email this to pmtalks at stmartingov.org or to the Chief of Police at pr at policesxm.sx. This also counts for deliveries that go from the French side to the Dutch side. The forms are available and can be uploaded or downloaded from www.stmartingov.org slash coronavirus and all of the forms are updated and available. However, the only ones that I will be signing are the forms C, which are mainly for persons, are only for persons crossing the border to come to the Dutch side. Vice versa, those persons traveling from Dutch to French side of St. Martin must have urgent medical appointments, have proof of such, and a waiver signed for work by their employer and the prefet of St. Martin and St. Martin, Madame Fisher. Also via online form and digital copies can be sent to COVID-19 PREF at saint-barth-saint-martin.gov.fr. This is available on our website, so all those who are looking for that information can find it there, and this also counts for deliveries. So that is to go from the Dutch to the French side. For clarity, I'd like to reiterate that the staff of essential businesses are allowed to provide, that are allowed to provide services must be in possession of a valid disaster pass or a waiver signed by the owner or managing director of the business. They do not require a signature from myself or Chief John. Persons already in position, possessor, oh, possession of an existing waiver that was issued a few weeks ago or last week will be hereby renewed. And this is mentioned within our national decree. Persons required to utilize the public roads for medical emergencies or for medical appointments should have proof of said appointments. This could be for your doctor, for the lab, or for the medical center. The national decree infographics have been prepared. So we have prepared bulleted information so that the public can get it and not have to go and read the entire addendum or the national decree itself. As of today, April 2020, 20th, 2020, in accordance with the national decree, government released several infographics to the public in order to bring clarity on the national decree. As such, you can find the essential business shopping schedule, which counts for all essential businesses that are open. Also, essential businesses which are allowed to provide service, as well as those for urgent and emergencies, as well as everyone that is allowed. The conditions for all essential um, services to be able to serve the public, as well as an information bulletin on the waivers. Another bulletin is being prepared to give all the information, numbers, and emails, and this will also be posted separately so that those needing to contact whichever entity would be able to do so with one glance. ESF 10, the Ministry of TIAT, um, would like to emphasize that today was a very good day in terms of social distancing and this various um, essential businesses that were open today. Many of the crowds that had been anticipated on Thursday and Friday and which died down by the end of the middle of the day were not busy today. So there was a pretty good spacing out of uh, persons at all locations. The rush has subsided and now ESF 10, Ministry of Tiat is now focusing their energy and time on the recovery together with their minister so that we can be prepared and our economy can be prepared based on research and what is being conducted. ESF 10 coordinator, Mr. De Weaver, will also be meeting with our ports of entry, airport and harbor to discuss and fine tune how would we would be able to reopen our ports of entry in a safe manner when the time comes. As such, in closing, I would like to commend each and every one of the essential staff of the various businesses and emergency services who continue, despite the pandemic, to work hard, to work safe, and to ensure the health of all concerns. Any, and I mean any, complaints will be properly researched if they are not following the guidelines. Of course, fines will be issued and such businesses run the risk of being shut down for the remainder of the state of emergency. 
I am sure most businesses who are happy to be open at this time are not going to jeopardize that and are therefore living up to the measures and regulations as has been published and shared with them prior to the national decree being established yesterday. I would also like to say that as front care and frontline workers, all the medical personnel, you are doing a tremendous job. I know some of you are quite tired and I would like to admonish you to find time to rest and we will be able to ensure that that takes place by the rest of the population remaining at home. I would like to thank each and every person who has followed the measures, who are regarding their health as priority one and remembering to remain faithful. Remember, we are faithful and we are strong. We are St. Martin. And I know that when I think about the root cause of so many mistakes, and spiritual pitfalls in life, the source always comes from fear. A lot of persons who remain negative within social media, etc., are acting out of faith. But I would like to ask you to stop, think about your actions, and look at whether you are doing damage or doing good. The government of St. Martin has been truly transparent in bringing you information almost to the minute as soon as we have it. Sometimes when people are let's say, Pung and Mele about certain things, that means that we have not yet gotten it official, and if you hear about it the next day or later in the day, that is when we have been able to ascertain if it is indeed fact and what measures have been taken to mitigate whatever may have gone wrong. I would like to ask you to remain faithful, as I said before, remain strong. We are a blessed country. We will come back from this. We are already on our way back, and we shall overcome. Stay blessed, St. Martin. Stay acting out of love and faith and have a wonderful evening further.